This video will cover Acquisitions Administration in Sitka's Evergreen. The Acquisitions module allows your library to track funds and purchases through the Evergreen Integrated Library System. The Acquisitions module is an add-on service with additional costs. Please contact Sitka Support for information regarding adding this module. Additional permissions are required to use the Acquisitions module. There are four acquisitions permission groups. These permission groups are secondary groups, so they must be used in conjunction with another staff permission profile. SICA staff will assign acquisitions administrator permissions to the lead acquisitions account. Any user with the ACADMIN permission is able to add the selector and purchaser secondary permissions to other staff accounts. The one exception is that any user whose main permission group is local system administrator will need to have their secondary act permissions added by Sitka staff. When setting up your acquisitions module, the first thing you must consider is your funding sources. Funding sources track where your money is coming from. You can find the acquisitions administration menu by clicking on admin and selecting acquisitions administration. We're going to select funding sources. And the funding source interface will load. Any existing funding sources will be listed. Um, we recommend that you create new funding sources every year. Um, so we're going to click on new funding source and we're going to call this one Friends of the Library 2016 and the owner will be Maple. You can choose your library system or branch and give the funding source a code, something that's easy to remember. I'll use FOL 2016. And then you will use the currency of the fund. And so I'm going to select Canadian and click Save. Once you've created the funding source, uh, the next thing you'll want to do is add credit. So just click on the funding source name and then click on Apply Credit. We will enter the amount of the funding source. So in this case, I'm going to put in $10,000. You can add an optional note and then just click on apply. It is very important to enter the correct amount as you cannot adjust this and you cannot delete the funding source once you have added credit. It's better to start with a small amount and add additional funds throughout the year if you're unsure of what your budget from a particular funding source will be. Now we will discuss funds. Funds allow you to track money spent on specific collections. Click on admin and select Acquisitions Admin, and then select Funds. And this will open up the Funds interface. You can choose your library uh, system or branch from the Context Org Unit dropdown, and you can also change the year using the year dropdown. These settings are sticky, so the next time you open this screen, the same choices will be displayed. Now, um, you'll, you can view your existing funds here on the funds interface. To create a new fund, you will just click on New Fund. A pop-up window will open. You're going to give the fund a name. Um, so I'm going to call this Audiobook. And we're going to give it a code of AB. And then we recommend that you add your library code to the end of the fund code. And so I'm going to use AB underscore MPL. I'm going to put the year in as 2016, and I'm going to choose my library as the org unit. And you can set up your funds at the system level or a branch level if you're multi-branch. The currency type will be Canadian. I'm going to mark that the fund is active. The balance stop percent prevents purchases when the fund spent balance reaches its balance stop percent. So I'm going to enter this in at 90%. The balance warning percent gives you a warning when the fund balance is getting low. So I'm going to put that in at 65%. So I'll start to know um, early on. Now, you'll want to check off propagate. So during year end, an almost identical fund is created. Um, the only difference will be the year. You'll also want to check off rollover and again during year end this will roll over any remaining funds and or encumbrances. There are some other settings involved with these two and we will discuss these more closer to year end. There's also additional information included in the year end videos. Once you've entered all of the fund information just click on save. Now to view more information about a particular fund, you can just click on the fund name. It will take you into the fund details screen. So the summary tab will show you the total allocated to the fund, the, to the combined balance, the spent balance, um, your total debits, 
as well as your total spent and total encumbered. The allocations tab will show you where the money has come from and which funding source uh, allocated money to this fund. The debits tab breaks down the debits by copy or line item. You can see which are encumbrances. Spent debits show you both the spent funds and the original amount encumbered. There's also a tags tab. This is used to add and remove fund tags. Now to create an allocation, you can just click on the create allocation button. You'll choose the funding source that the money is coming from, from the drop down menu. And then you can enter an amount and an additional note and then hit apply. If you go back to the summary tab, you can see that additional money has been added to the fund. In Evergreen, your vendors are called providers. Each provider used in the acquisitions process needs a provider profile. Click on Admin and select Acquisitions Administration and select Providers. Your provider profile contains information pertaining to contacting the provider, claiming, EDI, and holding subfield. Provider profiles can be edited if the information changes. Now to create a new provider, you're just going to click on the New Provider button and you'll need to give the provider a name and a code. And I recommend adding your library short code to the end of the provider code. You'll choose your library from the owner dropdown. And you'll choose the provider's currency and from the currency dropdown. So we'll just choose Canadian. And you must check off active in order to activate orders under this provider. Now you can enter any additional information that you may have at this point. Um, example, default number of copies, uh, provider SAN or their email address. Um, otherwise, you can just click on save. The provider profile will be created and um, you can add any additional information on this screen. If you have the provider address, you can add that using the new provider address button. Um, if you make any changes to the provider profile, always remember to click on save. Libraries use electronic data interchange, EDI accounts, to send purchase orders and receive invoices from providers electronically. Contact Sitka support to inquire about using EDI with your vendors. Distribution formulas can be used as line item templates with the batch updater on purchase orders. Formulas can be created and reused as needed. To create a distribution formula, click on Admin and select Acquisitions Administration and select Distribution Formulas. You will see your existing formulas and to create a new one, just click on New Formula. You'll need to give the formula a name. We're going to call this DVD and the formula owner will be Maple and you can choose your library system or branch. Ignore skip count at this point. It has no function in uh, current versions of Evergreen and just click on save. Now the template will be open and uh, will be created, but you'll need to add additional information to make it useful as a line item template. Um, so just click on new entry and you can choose your library uh, system or branch um, you'll want to choose the owning library here and then you can choose your copy location um, so we're going to assign this to on order and then the fund will be dvd and the circ modifier is dvd and we'll leave item count as one now we're going to click apply changes to save this and now this will be available as a line item template on the purchase orders under distribution formulas. Assigning this to a line item will apply these line item attributes quickly and easily. Currently, all claiming is manual, but the admin module allows you to build claim policies and specify the action that users should take to claim items. You can set up default claim policies for a specific provider, or you can apply claim policies to line items. You can then ask Evergreen to produce a list of claim ready items and you can follow the required actions using this list. There are several settings specific to acquisitions that can be set in the library settings editor. The library settings editor can be found under admin, local admin, and select library settings editor. The acquisition specific settings will be grouped under group acquisitions. Now all libraries using the acquisitions module are required to set a temporary barcode prefix. This should be the same as your library's shortcode. We also recommend that you set a temporary call number prefix. Again, you can just use your library's shortcode. Um, we 
also recommend that libraries uh, consider setting a default copy location and a default circulation modifier. More information about the acquisition-specific settings can be found in the Acquisitions Manual. A number of Sitka-wide defaults have been set in Evergreen. Information about these defaults can be found in the Acquisitions Manual. Additional defaults can be added by Sitka staff. To recommend a new default term, please email Sitka staff and provide a rationale for adding the term. Thank you for watching this video, and for more information, please visit the BC Libraries Cooperative website.